हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे दिस विल बी ट्वेंटी पार्ट ऑफ माय डिस्कशन ऑन डिस्टिलेशन एंड कंटिन्यूइंग विद द मैकेपथिल मेथड टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोर अबाउट द क्यू लाइन और द फीड लाइन इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिराइड इक्वेशन फॉर द फीड लाइन और द क्यू लाइन सो टुडे i'll be talking about uh, its intersection that is intersection of the q line with the diagonal line on the distribution diagram and the second thing that i'll be discussing for today is uh, we will know how uh, q lines uh, are plotted on the, on the distribution diagram for various types of feed so let us let us continue the discussion so to start with uh, we know the q line or the feed line it is nothing but a locus of points of intersection of the operating lines and which operating lines operating lines for uh, the rectifying and stripping sections so when you plot uh, the operating lines on uh, the distribution diagram they are going to intersect and the intersection point of these two lines uh will be moving on the distribution diagram as the slopes of this operating line change theek hai so the locus form formed uh, by these points of intersection is nothing but the q line or the feed line so in my previous video i have derived the equation you, you can just uh visit uh, my youtube channel and see that with you theek hai so um, let us um, briefly understand what is a distribution diagram so in order to understand that uh, we will consider a liquid solution of two components a and b so which is which is in equilibrium with uh, the vapor mixture of the same two components a and b Uh, a is the more volatile component in this case uh, it has a lower boiling point and higher vapor pressure x and y these are mole fractions of a that is mole fractions of the more volatile component in liquid and vapor phases respectively theek hai so in this case each xy pair it will define one equilibrium state and many such x y pairs when then be called uh, the vle data the vle data will then be a collection of many such pairs each pair will have one x value and one y value and these will be in equilibrium with each other theek hai so once you have the vle data uh, the distribution diagram is then plotted uh, have a if you plot x that is mole fraction of the more volatile component on x axis on the x axis and y that is mole mole fraction of the more volatile component in the like in the vapor phase on the y axis so if you plot this you get the distribution diagram theek hai so distribution diagram is simply uh, a plot of equilibrium values or values of x and y which are in equilibrium with each other so you so I, the distribution diagram i have already discussed about it in my previous earlier few uh, earlier videos so you have a plot um, a graph where x is plotted on the x axis y is plotted on y axis and uh, this is the diagonal line drawn for reference and the plot of x versus y will give us this curve which is called the equilibrium curve and that is why this diagram is also called the equilibrium diagram it is also called the equilibrium diagram take okay, so it is a square plot 
uh, what is the meaning of this on x axis the scale used on both the axes is same so for example on x axis the scale is say 1 cm is equal to 0 0.1 so we are going to use the same scale on the y axis as well okay so you get uh, a square plot where uh, you have the diagonal line which we are drawing for reference and then you have the equilibrium curve uh, which will be obtained when you plot all uh, the x and y values tk so let us let us move on uh, then in, let us find out the intersection point so on the x x y diagram which is the other name given to the distribution diagram q line is going to intersect the diagonal line what is the intersection point let us know so for that uh, we need equations of the two lines so the equation of the q line which i have already derived in my previous video it is y is equal to q upon 1 minus q into x minus xf upon q minus 1 and it, as you know q is a parameter that defines the thermal condition of the feed i have discussed in details regarding q in my previous videos i'm giving link to the, uh, those related videos in the description section okay so equation of the q line is y is equal to q upon q minus 1 into x minus xf upon q minus 1 I'm calling it as equation number one. Then equation of the diagonal line, diagonal line for a square plot uh, will have an equation y is equal to x because its slope is one. So equation is y is equal to x. So I'm calling it as equation number two. Now in order to get the intersection point of these two lines, what we need to do we need to solve these two equations simultaneously. Equation, so equation 1 and equation 2 are to be solved simultaneously. So for that, what I will do? I will use equation 2 in equation 1. That means wherever I have y in equation 1, I will replace it with x. Because as per equation 2, y is equal to x. So if I do that, so if I replace this y with x, I will be getting x is equal to q upon q minus 1 into x minus xf upon q minus 1. So in the next term, uh, in the next step, I will bring this term on this side. So if I do that, it will be x minus q upon q minus 1 into x. That is equal to minus xf upon q minus 1. So in the next step, what can what I'll do? I will take x common. So on the left hand side, you have two terms, and each term has x in it. So in the next step, I will take x common. So it will be x into uh, x common, and then I'll just simplify it. So it will be x into q minus one minus qx upon q minus one. So before taking uh, the common term, uh, I, I have simplified it. So it is x into q minus 1 minus q into x divided by q minus 1 is equal to minus xf upon q minus 1. Okay. So instead of taking, taking x common, I have simplified it. So in the next step, further simplification gives us this. Uh, QS, qx minus x minus qx upon q minus 1 that is equal to minus xf upon q minus 1 so qx and qx will get cancelled out q minus 1 is present on both the sides so it will also get cancelled out so it will be minus x is equal to minus xf so that is x is equal to xf that means that x coordinate for the point of intersection is xf 
And if you use this in equation two, which says that which says that y is equal to x. That means y will also be equal to x. Since y is x as per equation two, and now you have got x is x is equal to x. That means y is also equal to x. Therefore, uh, the intersection point is you have x is equal to x f and then y is equal to x f. So the intersection point will be having coordinates of x f x. Take care. That means the q line is going to intersect uh, the diagonal line on the distribution diagram at a point whose coordinates are x f x f. What is x f? x f is more fraction of the more volatile component in the feet and in our example this is e we have considered a binary mixture of two components a and b so xf will be um, the mole fraction of e which is the more volatile component tk so in this way you can get the intersection point of the q line uh, with uh, the diagonal line tk uh, so if you uh, have to understand this with the help of the distribution diagram. Let us let us do it. So you have the distribution diagram which I have already uh, discussed. So xf I am locating xf over here. So from xf I'll be going to the diagonal line, and the y coordinate of this point will also be xf. So, Q line will be intersecting the diagonal line at this point. Okay, so for example, uh, the Q line could be like this. So, it will start at x f x f and it will move in the direction of the equilibrium curve. So, for example, the Q line could be like this. So, it will start at x f x f and then it will intersect somewhere uh, to the equilibrium uh, with the, the equilibrium like equilibrium curve take it so in this way now we know that uh, the intersection of the q line with the diagonal line occurs at a point whose coordinates are x f x f next we are going to see what will be the q line for each of the feet and that we know there are five different types of feet so for each of those feet how the q line will be plotted on the distribution diagram let us understand take it uh -huh, okay then the slope of the q line is q upon q minus one why because you know equation of the q line is y is equal to q upon q minus one into x minus x f upon q minus one. So this is the slope. Take care. So again, slope is in terms of the parameter q. So depending on the value of the q, and the slope is going to change. That means this line, the q line is then going to change its position depending on its slope, which in turn depends on q. And uh, for uh, the five different types of feet, uh, Q has different values. Okay, so next we are going to see how the flow uh, slope changes with the value of Q, and then how uh, the Q line moves on the distribution diagram. Take let us uh, first briefly we will know what are the values. I have discussed in details in my previous videos. So for cold liquid. Uh, there are different uh, five different types. Let me first write all those types. So you have cold liquid, saturated liquid, partially vaporized feed. Then you have saturated vapor, and the fifth one is superheated vapor. Regarding cold liquid, it is a liquid solution at a temperature well below its bubble point, well below the bubble point of the uh, liquid solution. So for such a feed, Q is greater than 1. 
then saturated liquid it, it, it is nothing but a liquid solution at its bubble point and for this q is equal to 1 partially vaporized feet it is a mixture of liquid and vapor phases and for it q lies between 0 and 1 it is not 0 it is not 1 but between 0 and 1 then for saturated vapor uh, which is nothing but vapor at its dew point q is 0 and for superheated vapor uh, which is a vapor at a temperature above its dew point for superheated vapor q is less than 0 okay so that means for each of the feed you have different values uh, for q and according the the slope of the q line will change and that will change the position of q line on the distribution diagram so let us let us know about it first uh, we will understand uh, how a Q line will be plotted if the feed is cool liquid. So for that, uh, we will uh, start with the equation of the Q line, which is Y is equal to Q upon Q minus 1 into X minus XF upon Q minus 1. And this is equation 1 in our discussion. Now the slope of the Q line is Q upon Q minus 1. So for cold liquid, as you know, Q is greater than 1. Okay, so let us let us just take one simple uh, value to understand this. So for example, if Q is equal to 1.5, which is greater than 1, which, re which represents uh, a cold liquid. So in this case, slope will be equal to 1.5 divided by 1.5 minus 1 so that is this is 1.5 divided by 0.5 and which comes out to be 3 okay so for every value that is greater than 1 you are going to get a slope that is a positive value that means we can conclude that for cold liquid when Q is greater than 1, the slope of the Q line will always be positive. The slope of the Q line will be positive. Are you understanding it? So therefore, on the XY plot, uh, the Q line will have a positive slope. The Q line has a positive slope. But for this case, for cool liquid, uh, the minimum value for the slope will be 1 and maximum value would be infinity. That means for cold liquid, slope of the Q line, it is positive and it will lie between 1 and infinity. So you can check it. The slope will be lying between 1 and infinity. It will never be less than 1 because uh, you are subtracting 1 from whatever Q value you have. That means slope will always be greater than 1. Take a hand, it will be less than some infinite value. Okay. And now let us know uh, what will be the slope of the Q line for saturated liquid. At the end, we are going to plot all of the Q lines, Q lines for all the feeds on the distribution diagram. First, we are checking what will be the slope. So if uh, the feed is a saturated liquid, then what is uh, the slope? Let us know. So for that, we will use the equation of the Q line. Now you really know that equation y is equal to Q upon Q minus 1 into x minus xf upon Q minus 1. Equation 1, slope is uh, Q upon Q minus 1. Now for saturated liquid, what is the value of Q? Q is 1. So if you use that value in the equation for the slope, it will be 1 upon 1 minus 1. That is, slope is equal to 1 upon 0. And anything upon 0 is infinite. So in this case, when the feed is a saturated liquid, the slope of the Q line is infinite. So that means on the X, X, Y plot, Q line will have, or rather has a slope as an infinite slope. And a line whose slope is infinite is nothing but a vertical line. Okay, so that means... For saturated liquid, Q line will be a vertical line on the XY. No? Take it. 
No, let us let us move ahead. Uh, next feed, partially vaporized feed. So again, you have the equation for the Q line. Q minus Q upon 1 into X minus X upon Q minus 1. Slope is Q upon Q minus 1. Now partially for, for partially vaporized feet, uh, you know Q is between 0 and 1. Okay, so let us understand this with uh, the help of one, of one such value which lies between 0 and 1. Let us say that Q is equal to 0.5. So in that case, slope will be equal to 0.5 divided by 0.5 minus 1. So that is 0.5 divided by minus 0.5. And that comes out to be minus 1. Okay, so that means uh, for every value of Q, which is between 0 and 1, slope will be negative. You can check with any value. Okay, so because you have Q less than 1, and in the denominator you are subtracting 1 from that Q, so that will always give a negative value. So our conclusion is for partially vaporized feed, slope of uh, the feed line or the Q line is negative. So on the xy plot, the q line will have a negative slope. Negative slope. So accordingly, q line will be in line with negative slope on the distribution type. TK. So let us move. Then let us check q uh, line for uh, the feed if it is saturated vapor. What is the slope? So equation. Again, it is Q upon Q minus 1 minus X F upon Q minus 1. Slope in this case is Q upon Q minus 1. And now for saturated vapor, Q is 0. So if you use that to calculate the slope, slope will be 0 upon 0 minus 1. That is 0 upon minus 1. 0 upon anything is 0. That means for uh, saturated vapor, Q line will have a zero slope on the xy plot. Q line has zero slope. And a line with zero slope is nothing but a horizontal line. So Q line will be a horizontal line on the xy plot for saturated vapor. Take it. So now uh, let us know what is the slope of the Q line for superheated vapor. So equation y is equal to q upon q minus 1 into x minus xf upon q minus 1. That is, the slope of the q line is q upon q minus 1. And for superheated vapor, q is less than 0. That means it is a negative value. So let us check uh, with one of the negative value. Let us check with 0.5. Let, uh, let us say, Q is equal to minus 0.5. Just an example. So negative Q value, it indicates superheated vapor. So in this case, slope will be equal to minus 0.5 divided by minus 0.5 minus 1. So that is minus 0.5 divided by minus 1.5 which is nothing but 0.5 divided by 1.5. So after dividing this, you'll get one number. What I mean to say that you are going to get a positive value. Okay, so that means this will be true for every such value of Q, which is less than 0. That means in this case, the slope is positive for the Q line. But this time, the slope will be lying between 0 and 1. So when you have feed as a superheated vapor, slope is positive. Slope of the Q line is positive. We have understood this with an example. But slope 
for superheated so slope of the q line for superheated paper will be lying between 0 and 1 okay so you have to remember in k in the case of cold liquid also the slope is positive but for that slope lies between 1 and infinity for superheated vapor again the slope is positive but here it will be between 0 and 1 okay so now till now we have understood what will be the slope of the q line for all the five types of fields now let us see how this q line will be plotted on the x y diagram uh, so for all uh, the feats we are going to see how the q lines will be plotted so we will consider the distribution diagram i have discussed it so you have the diagonal line you have the equilibrium curve and the q line is going to start at a point which has coordinates of x f x f because the intersection of the q line with the diagonal line occurs at x f x f tf so for reference i'm drawing this vertical line and then i will draw this this is a vertical line which will be having or which has a slope of or which has an infinite slope and then i will draw a horizontal line which has a zero slope and again for reference i'll draw a diagonal line which has a slope of now uh, what take it because this angle is 45 and slope is tan of that angle so tan 45 is 1 tan 90 is infinity tan 0 is 0 i have drawn these lines for uh, reference so let us start with cold liquid we just saw for cold liquid you know q is greater than 1 so line will have a positive slope and slope is between 1 and infinity so line with slope 1 is uh, the diagonal line or line that coincides with the diagonal and line with an infinite slope is a vertical line okay so for cold liquid uh, the q line will be having slope between 1 and infinity that means the q line will be lying between the vertical line and the diagonal line. Take okay, so for cold liquid, uh, the q line could be like this. So we start at xf xf and move towards the equilibrium curve. And now it is the slope is between infinity and one. So that will be the q line for cold liquid. When q is greater than one, q line will be dotted in this way. Then for saturated liquid, uh, what is uh, Q? Q is equal to 1 and slope is infinite. And a line with an infinite slope is the vertical line. So for saturated liquid, the Q line will be a vertical line on the distribution diagram. Okay. So for cold liquid, you have this Q line. For saturated liquid, it will be a vertical line like this. Then let us check for partially vaporized feet. For partially vaporized feet, Q is between 0 and 1. And the Q line will be having a negative slope. So line with negative slope will be lying in this in this quadrant, you can say. So slope is less than 0, that is negative. So a slope with uh, a line with negative slope will look like this. So for partially vaporized feet, Q line will be plotted in this way. And for uh, it, Q is between 0 and 1, as you know. Then for saturated vapor, Q is 0, you know, and slope is also 0. So in this case, it will be a horizontal line. Okay, so you have two options. It could be like this. But we are interested in that line, which will move towards the equilibrium curve. So that's why the Q line for saturated vapor will be a horizontal line like this, where Q is zero. Okay. And then finally for superheated vapor, you know Q is less than one, it has positive slope, the Q line has positive slope and the slope is between zero and one. So 
a line with zero slope will be a horizontal line and line with slope is equal to one will be coinciding with the diagonal line but we are interested so you may think that q line will may q line could be lying over here but we are not interested in that line we are interested in the line that moves towards the equilibrium curve take okay, a so uh, in this case q line will be plotted in this way Okay, so it has slope that is greater than 0 and less than 1. So if you, you can extend the line over here. Same line if you extend it. You come to know that. Well, okay, now I'll just do that. So if you extend the line. So slope is between 1 and 0. But as I said, we are interested in that line which moves towards the equilibrium curve. And ultimately, it will be intersecting the equilibrium curve. We'll talk more about it in future videos. Okay, so in this way, uh, Q lines for different types of feeds uh, can be plotted on the distribution diagram. So for cold liquid, Q line will be looking like this. For saturated liquid, Q line will be looking like this. For partially vaporized feed, Q line will be looking like this. For saturated vapor, Q line will be a horizontal line. And for superheated vapor, Q line will be looking like this. So with this, I end my discussion for today, for today's video. Uh, in this, I have discussed intersection of the Q line with the diagonal line on the distribution diagram. It is also called equilibrium diagram, it is also called xy plot. And then I also discussed what will be the slopes of Q line for different types of feet. And finally, I have told you how you can plot uh, those Q lines on the distribution diagram. So this, this plotting of the Q line is important in the MACAP theory method. So in, in our next video, uh, I'll be telling you how to find number of stages in a typical tray column by using Mechathel method. We will be solving one numerical based on that in coming videos. For now, thank you for being with me. Uh, if you have any doubts, you please mention those in the comment section. You, uh, If you uh, uh, have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to it. Tell your friends to subscribe to it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon in my next video.